She composed for the legendary Aretha Franklin, Beyonce called her one of the best rappers ever, and Outkast even opened for her. We're talking about no one other than Ms. Lauren Hill. Her talent is undeniable. Rolling Stone named her one of the greatest singers of all time, and Time Magazine dubbed her the queen of hip hop. But she only released one studio album. So how did she accomplish so much? This is Miss Lauren Hill's story and how she became one of the most celebrated, influential, and respected artists in music history. First, let's go way back to before she became a music icon and a household name. In 1987, Elle Boogie performed at the famous live show Amateur Night at the Apollo and was booed. But as she continued to sing, the crowd eventually came around and clapped for her in the end, not knowing that they just witnessed the beginning of history. Three years later, Miss Hill would make another public appearance as a background dancer in the music video for Poor Georgie by MC Light. But she wouldn't stay in the background for long. Picture it. The scene is Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey. Prakaz Rel Michel, known as Praz, approaches Miss Hill about joining the group. He would later introduce her to Wyclef Jean, and together they became known as the Fugees. As they worked on their debut album, Miss Hill continued her acting career which led to her getting cast as Rita Louise Watson in Sister Act Two alongside Whoopi Goldberg. The film served as a breakout film for Ms. Hill, who also contributed to the soundtrack. In 1994, the Fugees dropped their first album, Blunted on Reality. The New York Times said the album concocts brash, smart raps drawing on Jamaican dancehall rhythms as well as American hip hop. And Miss Hill was a standout. She showed the ability to switch between being a hard-hitting rapper like Ice Cube to being effortlessly jazzy with her delivery. But it wasn't until their sophomore album, The Score, was released that the Fugees reached new levels of success. In The Score, they found their own unique voice. Kroz and Wyclef lean more into the Caribbean heritage. Fugees is short for refugees, after all and Ms. Hill brought more of her bluesy inspiration. El Boogie's soulful talent is on full display in their chilling hit single, Ready or Not. Ready or not, here I come, you can't hide. Gonna find you and take it slowly. Ms. Hill lays her heart bare with emotional vocals and even cried while recording before delivering one of her most popular lines. I could do what you do, easy. Believe me, front and trick and be he be GB. So why you imitating Al Capone? I be needing Simone and defecating on your microphone. But it was Miss Hill's cover of Killing Me Softly with his song that ended up being the most popular single from the album. In the middle of the hard hitting 15 track rap album, Miss Hill brought new life to the 70s song. With a sample from A Tribe Called Quest, the song's hip hop production matched with Miss Hill's raspy yet smooth voice and made the song an instant classic. Just listen to this run. The score went on to win the Grammy Award for Best Rap Album, making Ms. Hill the first woman to win a Grammy in that category. A love triangle and creative and financial disagreements made it hard for the Fugees to continue forward as a group. After Miss Hill and Wyclef Jean ended their tumultuous relationship, the Fugees broke up and Miss Hill went solo. An early 20-something year old Miss Hill started crafting the early parts of an album in her living room in her hometown, South Orange, New Jersey. Her label reportedly wanted her to release another album with the Fugees, but Miss Hill forged ahead by recruiting her own team to help her achieve her vision. She told Rolling Stone, I wanted to write songs that lyrically move me and have the integrity of reggae and the knock of hip hop and the instrumentation of classic soul. Between label pressure to wrap up the album, naysayers, filming the movie Restaurant, and giving birth to her son Zion, she got it done. For her debut solo album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, she drew from her personal experience to create a raw, emotional cross-genre album that explored themes of love, black empowerment, social justice, femininity, motherhood, and more. She lays out all of her emotions on the album, 
In the soulful ballad, X Factor, she mourns her relationship with Wyclef Sean. In X Factor, although she's singing, her voice bounces on top of the beat in a way that embodies a rap flow. This sound would also help pave the way for neo-soul music alongside the artistry of Erica Badu, Floetry, and Jill Scott. You can hear Miss Hill's Motown soul influence in songs like doo Up That Thing. The track's hook and riff samples the soul band The Fifth Dimension. In Duop, Miss Hill also showcases her lyrical flair, proving why Miss Education is seen as one of the best rap albums. The album is also influenced by Jamaican dancehall, as well as the sounds and philosophy of reggae. Half of the album was recorded at Bob Marley's studio in Jamaica, and at the time, she was in a relationship with Marley's son, Rohan. In the track Lost Ones, Miss Hill's vocals call back to Sister Nancy's hit dancehall record, Bomb Bomb. To learn more about the influence of the miseducation, I sat down with Nadira, founder of The Gumbo, a magazine that celebrates black women in hip hop. I think one thing that we don't talk about a lot though, or at least I love to talk about, um, is the blues and when it comes to the influence of blues artists in her music. And I think if you're hearing the call and response in old blues songs and you're hearing Lauren sing and you're hearing them respond with chants and stuff like that and, and shouting, especially on songs like To Zion, it's just so prevalent and it's so obvious there. when it comes to women in blues and how they were using, if you think about Ma Rainey, you think about Bessie Smith, they were using the blues to talk about, you know, love and relationships and family and heartbreak and all these different things that weren't really being done in that way in music. And I think that's what makes it such a great body of work is that she is taking all of these things and taking all these influences and really making them her own and just nodding to all these different parts of, of the music that we have. Now let's talk stats. The album, which is her only solo album to date, will become one of the most highly acclaimed albums of all time. With over 20 million copies sold worldwide, it debuted at the number one spot on Billboard 200 chart, breaking Madonna's record for first week sales by a female artist. During that time, she was also a musical guest on Saturday Night Live and had a sold out world tour. And let's not forget about her 10 Grammy nominations and five wins, including Album of the Year, making her the first rapper to win Album of the Year. Ms. Hill's talent earned her the respect from her predecessors and peers. In an interview with Billboard, Grammy-nominated rapper Rhapsody said she knew how to incorporate melody into a rhyme so people could sing along with her, even as she was rapping about things that might have been complex. In the same interview, Lizzo noted that she set the bar. I was always afraid of being a singer, but then when I heard Lauryn Hill, I was like, maybe I can do both. Even though the miseducation of Lauryn Hill was such a great success, the world is still waiting on a sophomore album over 20 years later. Ms. Hill said that lack of support and ideological differences were the reasons that it never happened. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Ms. Hill said, no one from my label has ever called me and asked, how can we help you make another album, ever? With the miseducation, there was no precedent. I was for the most part free to explore, experiment, and express. After the miseducation, there were scores of tentacled obstructionists, politics, repressing agendas, unrealistic expectations, and saboteurs everywhere. With only one solo album, some think Miss Hill's legacy stops with miseducation, but that's not true. In 2002, she released an MTV Unplugged album, which included a performance of Mystery of Iniquity that was later sampled on Kanye West's All Falls Down. Down. 
Miss Hill also wrote and produced songs for legends like Aretha Franklin, Mary J. Blige, CeCe Winans, Whitney Houston, and Santana. Why do you think Miss Lauren Hill has only released one album? Everyone talks about this so much. Also, I couldn't imagine creating something like The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill and then trying to follow it up with all that pressure on me. Because one, I gave y'all something really good. I also did the live album. I haven't completely like disappeared or whatever, but I'm also a human being. Miss Hill continues to tour and performs new renditions of her songs to keep it fresh for her audiences and herself. Since the Fugees broke up in 1997, they've performed together a few times and there's been talk of another reunion. And while she draws criticism for only releasing one studio album, her influence can be heard in the music of today's chart toppers like Beyonce, Adele, J. Cole, Drake, and Cardi B. I feel like a lot of the young artists, especially because I'm an R&B, especially in R&B, like take a lot of Lauren influence. They definitely do. They definitely do. And even I feel like a lot of the women who rap now too, if you ask them, you know, who are your favorite? They uh, almost often, all the time they say Lauren Hill. And I'm just like, this is a testament to her impact. Yeah. Good night, you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Before you go, I want to let you know about Fight the Power, How Hip Hop Changed the World, a new PBS series hosted by hip hop legend Chuck D. It's about how hip hop became a global movement that spoke truth to power. Check out the link in the description below and let them know Soundfield sent you.